So, uh, Steph, we've we've now spoken about the the last few days and how things have gone. Uh, we we've certainly learnt a lot. You you've uh, really inspired us again. What what can I uh, expect for the future then? Where where are we going with our collaboration uh, with with Juilliard? Well, this is a long term relationship, Carl. And so while I've just had one virtual visit this year focused on drama, I'll be in contact with the drama teachers throughout the year. We're going to be doing some some virtual check ins and always in contact via email and meetings like these. And then there'll be two more visits later in the year from uh, Sala for dance and Steve for music this year. And really what we as a Juilliard team are working on is you know, gathering some information and working with your staff and faculty as a team to see how can we unify a department? How can we figure out how to stretch how, um, where drama and dance is available in both primary and secondary schools and how we can unify the Juilliard approach going forward so that the performing arts is a really well-oiled machine. I hear you had quite the turnout for the parent forum. How did the session go? I was so thrilled that so many parents came to our forum, Carl, and they were asking great questions and from, by the looks of things, right. participating and giving things a try and really wanted to understand what this relationship was. Um, and I'm happy, I think we could, we cleared up a lot of misconceptions about what the collaboration isn't. And I think a lot of the hesitancy we get from parents is thinking it's gonna be this performing arts career training program. And um, so I think it was really great to dispel some of those myths and get them a little taste of what's actually happening in their classrooms. And I got to spend a lot of time and, with the And weren't kids. they so confident, Steph? Or they, you know, so many of the parents really threw themselves into the, you know, the activities that you, you led us through. Yeah, and it was amazing to see. I had a couple of their students. There were a few year 10 parents, a lot of primary parents, which was wonderful, yeah. and a few year 10 parents. And I could definitely see the, the enthusiasm from their households when I got to spend time with their students You know, the following evening, um, which was wonderful. So I got to spend two class periods with year 10s who are really have the enormous challenge of transitioning a piece that was almost done with their coursework monologues that were blocked in the studio and pretty close to ready to go and suddenly have to really change over to a virtual situation. And so suddenly they have choices about their backgrounds and their space and how they're moving, where they're placing the camera. And, but the kind of intelligence that they all brought to it and critical thinking and curiosity about what's possible was just so fun to play with. We had a wonderful time. It was like, well, what if you put the camera over there? And what if we tried this? And I think it's really gonna shine through with their coursework this year with not only the choices they made internally with the, their character choices, but you know how resilient they were at, at changing last minute to a virtual situation. It, it's a huge credit to the school. Oh, that's great to hear. And uh, I, I love it when you start uh, digging into some of the attributes and the skills that an engagement in the performing arts can really bring to our students. And maybe you could uh, give us a little bit more about what the, uh, the underlying principles and, and aspirations of the collaboration are for our students, because I know, I know it goes much wider than purely performing arts as a skill set. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing that I'm seeing, even just from what Amanda's brought back in drama from my first visit to now, is um, their creativity is ignited and they're so much more curious about their own work, about what's possible in their own choice making and that kind of um, wide open field instead of following things to the letter of an instruction, but actually asking uh, what's possible, how can we think outside um, what the instructions might be or uh, what the example is. I think a big thing I'm seeing is by flipping, you know, all of the aesthetic examples that they're getting to the end of their class periods with the Juilliard approach, they're approaching their own work with a new boldness, which is really great. And it was fun to hear last year when I came to visit how much they liked their own pieces better than <laughs> the core work we ended up showing them, which I think is a huge credit to them in that they were invested in what they're doing and their collaboration with each other. And it was really wonderful. Yeah, and that's really lovely. What, what, one of the, the key features for me of the Juilliard approach is that flipping where uh, you know, the aesthetic piece is held back. You, you deny 
the access to the, the professional performance until there's been some really uh, uh, deep investigation of a particular dimension of, of performance. And, and it almost uh, builds the uh, suspense as to what you're going to see at the end. Uh, and I think that's a great part of the, the lesson structure. Uh, did, did you uh, get any feedback on the, the nature of that lesson structure from either you, the, working alongside our, our teachers or, or the students themselves? Um, yeah, I think the biggest growth there from kind of this year with the, uh, I did get to visit the year nines last year and the year tens this year. So there's some students yeah. that I actually got to recognize and we're thrilled to see again. Um, and I think the biggest growth there is just the the reflection of their own work and what they're seeing uh, mirrored in the professional Juilliard core works is yeah. um, it's a more it's a deep more meaningful engagement because they have so many experiences to bring to it and they're not afraid to ask questions or um, you know make bold comparisons about the work that they're seeing and the world around them and the work that they're creating. And that's really exciting that that's just taking off. And, you know, I hope I don't get to see them in their other subject areas. But from what Amanda's told me, that's trickling down into how they're critically thinking about some of their literature and you know, science. And that's wonderful. And, and isn't that one of the uh, underpinning aims of the Juilliard approach, that it's not, so, not, not an approach that roots itself uh, in, in some rigorous, constrained way in, in uh, in drama specifically. The, the hope and the, the aspiration is that it, it leaks through uh, in terms of, uh, you know, mindset and, and aspiration and attributes and skills into all other areas of the curriculum as well. And actually into the, the character of the, of the child. And you manage to do all of that with a cold call on the parents in the, the parent forum as well. And it was great to see so many of them taking the steps, the key steps through uh, through one, one of the the Juilliard uh, lessons, and and actually um, you know absorbed the purpose as well. They got it, and they were reflecting that back to you. And I I was hearing those uh, those mums of Year Ten drama students talking about the approach now, and I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall when their their children got home, home or back back in to conversation with them later. Uh, and, and they were able then on more of a level to talk about the learning in the day. And that's something that I think we should be trying to empower parents with more so. Uh, that idea of being able to, from an informed standpoint, engaging the learning that's been going on. Uh, but is, is that something that, that you're trying to achieve in the parent forums? I believe so. I think the knowledge is power and dispelling a lot of myths, but also just having an open dialogue and even accessing some of parents' own artistry really helps them relate to the kind of the open questioning and the inquiry that we're asking their students to engage in. And if that happens around the dinner table later and yep. the students get to share some of their enthusiasm for either choices they've made or work they've created or um, a Juilliard core work that they got to have a meaningful encounter with, then that's amazing. That's the that's the goal. And, and look, uh, fi final thing for me is uh, you know how how is all of this new approach to connecting with communities you know through uh, Zoom or or meet or, or so on? How has that uh, required you to adapt your approach personally? It's been a fascinating journey, and um, and it's a really wild. I think one of the major challenges with drama is when you're in a virtual setting, you literally have this box around you. And so it feels more like film. And so the challenge becomes, how do you bring in a theatrical sense of being and a theatrical aesthetic to something that's much more, it's essentially a close up in a film. So asking students to, to stand back from their cameras, asking them to be off camera so they can really explore their whole bodies because we kind of end up limiting ourselves to what we can see. So that's been fascinating. And we've gone through, Juilliard this past year has gone through every lesson that we've written and tagged them on our website for either being um, easy for teachers to adapt for virtual synchronous, virtual asynchronous teaching, um, socially distance, you know, um, and for you guys, the, the SOP measures that are in place. Uh, 
And so teachers have can search all of that and find material that will be adaptable for them because their jobs have been you know, difficult as enough as it is without having to readapt lessons that they're they're getting from us. So it's been a really fascinating journey. I've learned a lot, and I think um, the the biggest thing, the biggest hope that I'm holding on to is that students can still connect and collaborate with each other over this medium. Sometimes even better than we the generation above can imagine. So uh, I think students will have no problem having meaningful encounters and then going back to normal whenever that happens. Yeah, and I, I really hope so too. Uh, look, Steph, thank you so much for uh, joining us at BSKL for the, the last few days and, and sharing everything that you have. I know that you've inspired students and teachers alike. So always a pleasure to have you with us. Thanks again. Thanks.